What's up, feasters? It's me, Blanche, with Feast in the Middle East, and I brought my mom because we're gonna do a very popular dish called mekloube. Yeah. Mekloube in Arabic means? Upside down. Upside down, because we're gonna turn this dish upside down. This is a very popular Palestinian dish. It originated in Palestine. It's a one-pot meal. It's got your veggie, it's got your starch, and it's got your meat. So why don't we start with uh, the cauliflower? Yes, you want we'll to show them the I want to show you it's the cauliflower. It's got cauliflower, which is my favorite vegetable. Yeah, ever. a lot of people look at it and like, what do I do with it? I don't know what to do with it. Very basic. I'll show you what to do with it. You gotta first of all get rid of all the leaves, the outer leaves, because we don't want to eat those. What you do is, if you look at it, you will see that each one has a, fl a florette. You know, it's like florets that are there. Mm -hmm. So you need to go take each one, you know, and just cut it like that. You know, all around the crown. And all around. And what you do, you, I like to start from the bottom up because this way you could see the stem better. Mm -hmm. So you kind of okay. cut the stem cut out the, as so much you, as possible. If you look possible. at the flower, you'll see the stem. So go all the way to the edge of the stem and try to cut all the way to the edge. When they get cooked, they actually shrink substantially. Oh, and yeah. it's always nice to have the cauliflower show up in your bite. Yes. You know? Definitely. We fight over it. Like they get mad at me because yeah. sometimes I pick out all the cauliflowers. Yes. And they, but she always does. <laughs> okay. After you cut it, uh, you, you have to pre-salt it a little bit and let it sit for a while, okay? okay. Like, um, you know, like that. Just a little bit of salt around it. This, what, what this does is it draws away the moisture from the cauliflower so that when you either fry it, because that's what usually this dish requires is frying, it won't absorb too much oil. But, but we're not going to fry the cauliflower because we want to be healthy or healthy. Yeah, because we, say everybody's <laughs> watching their weight nowadays, so we don't want to fry it. We have found a way that we could do it much easier and less calorie, okay? What we do is you have a little bit of olive oil mm -hmm. and you take each one, after you let it sit for half an hour, like I said, yeah. you take the olive oil, the olive oil and you brush each one like that. And it's less messy than frying. You know, very messy. And, and I have to admit, like when I've eaten makluba that had fried cauliflower in it, it's like it's heavier. You, you start burping it, like you burp cauliflower. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I don't it's like it. It's much heavier, <laughs> definitely. This, this is, is the lighter better. dish and it will be easy on your digestion. This dish reminds me of my Cito, my grandfather, because he loved it and he loved entertaining with it because it's a very dramatic dish when you turn it upside down when guests come. I love my grandfather. I, I wish I want to dedicate this episode to him. May he rest in peace. Um, yeah. And you know, your Cito so, used to invite the biggest personalities. Yeah. He used to you invite know, and bishops. invite them for, for Lube. And yeah. it's a very, very uh, traditional dish that you serve to an important guest that yeah. comes over or whatever. Okay. okay, so now this is ready to be put in the oven. 400 degrees for? For like half, half an, an hour. hour. Okay. Keep checking on it. You don't want it to get right. burned. This, I already did this in advance so that people can get an idea of what it should look like. It should be nice and brown. So just sticking it in the oven, is it's that simple really. Yeah. Okay, so for this dish, uh, lamb has been traditional, but we thought we would lighten it up by using chicken and we use bone and chicken and I like dark meat like uh, uh, drumsticks are fine or thighs. Uh, you could use white meat, but it's gonna get a little bit dry if you cook it over a long period of time. So I have just organic drumsticks and I'm gonna create a marinade where I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil to it so that the spices stick to it. All right, and I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of allspice and for fun, some turmeric, just a little bit of turmeric to give it color and about a teaspoon of garlic powder and some pepper and some salt. So salt for seasoning. Now, a lot of people make makluba in different ways. They use different spices. Some people add coriander, some people add cinnamon. I like to just keep it simple because I really want the flavors to cardamom, shine through. Cardamom. I'm gonna get my hands, I wash my hands. I'm gonna just get my hands dirty. Some people add cardamom. Yeah, cardamom, cardamom. So, after you just let it sit, you can let it marinate, but you can just start cooking it right away. Have a pan with about two tablespoons of oil ready. Uh, make sure you turn the pan around. There we go. And what we're gonna do is put the chicken pieces in there. You don't want to crowd the chicken. You want a nice sear. So do them in batches. So I usually do like two batches of five. 
And this is, you want it to just sear so that it's brown around the edges so it's more appetizing. But the rest of the cooking is going to be done in the pot with rice and vegetables. Let me just wash my hands. As we wait for this to get As a golden we will, sear. We're going to demonstrate to you what we do for the onions, onions that are going to go with the rice. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we're going to have, uh, we're going to need two kinds of onions. One is going to be the diced onion mm -hmm. that is going to go with the chicken and to give it a delicious taste for the broth. Now the other onion is a caramelized onion that we're going to use with the rice to give it extra flavor, that extra dimension of flavor for the for the onions when we caramelize them. And we're gonna use them inside the, inside the rice and the meat. There is no such thing as too much onions. If you like onions, feel free to use three or four onions. We're using two onions, but you could always use more because the caramelized onion flavor is really important in lending sweetness and dimension and richness to this dish. It really makes this dish. I'm actually a bit impatient. This could be a bit darker, but... It has to be nice and brown. Light golden brown. Light golden brown. There we go. Okay, so now that the chicken's nicely browned, I'm going to put it in this pot right here. Okay, because this is going to make a rich broth for all the food to cook together. And I've got the great chicken bits left in this pan, and I want to take advantage of that flavor. So we're going to add the chopped onions to that. We'll add that later. Yeah. So we're gonna saute the onions so it's nice and uh, translucent, a little bit golden brown. Make sure you get all those yummy chicken bits in there. Uh, season it with a little more salt. I'll just season it with some salt. Yeah, so every time I eat this dish, I think of Cito. Cito, my Cito, my grandfather, was one of the funniest guys ever. His main mantra to me growing up was always Blanche, show your class, not your ass. And that's what I was, did. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of making a hashtag, you know? Maybe you guys could start a hashtag in process. Show your class, not your ass. And he said it that that was his thing. He always wore three-piece suits, yeah. even to the beach. Even to I, go to the doctor. To go to the doctor, he always wore his vest. And, and the he nurses was a tail would tell me, oh, he looks so handsome, your, your father-in-law. He looks so good. Now this is the garlic we're gonna add about, in. this is about five cloves of minced garlic. You could add more, you could add less, depending on your preference for garlic. And I'm adding it in the end, because if you add it in the beginning, they're gonna burn and nothing is worse than burnt garlic in your food. Yes. It just needs a quick, uh, yeah, it's, then it's bitter. Very okay. quickly, just a minute, that's all you really need. Okay. And I'm going to also add this to the pot where I had put my yes. chicken. So here we go. All right, just like that. Okay, so to make a rich broth, which is gonna cook the rice later, we're gonna put five cups of boiling water. So I, this is a nifty gadget. It boils my water very quickly. It saves me time in the kitchen. You just plug it in and it'll boil your water for you, but you could also put it in a tea kettle. So we're gonna wait until this boils. In the meantime, I'm going to season the broth. Yeah, yeah so we're gonna season the broth by adding about a teaspoon of salt. Yes. We're going to add another teaspoon of allspice and another teaspoon of turmeric. I love turmeric. I love its medicinal properties. I love the golden color it gives food. And I love the nice, pleasant flavor that it adds to food. So this is going to be the broth that's going to cook the chicken. Okay, so I'm going to wait for this broth to boil again because, you know, it cooled off because I added it to the chicken. We're going to let it boil uh, and then we're going to reduce it to a simmer and cook it for 30 minutes because it's chicken. If you're using lamb, you have to cook it for one hour so that it develops a nice rich broth. So I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna start on those onions that my mom just cut. Cover it. Yeah, let's cover it right here. Okay. Okay, so right now we're gonna start by putting some oil and sauteing the onions, right? So let's add our onion. Yeah, so more oil. So I say to saute the onions, you should probably add about two to three tablespoons of oil. You could always add more, but let's let it heat up. We're gonna take all yes. these. 
I usually what I do is I open it like that. Oh, you open them up so that yeah. they make nice slivers. Nice slivers. Yeah, there we go. Just like I that. I forgot to do that. Got carried away in the conversation. No problem. That's what happens when you, when you talk. When you talk, you, burn <laughs> your, you either mess up your food or burn your food or whatever. Get carried away. That's in the why they say too many cooks in the kitchen sometimes. Cause it's for the brook. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. For the brook. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to saute this until it's nice and browned and caramelized so that we can add it to the rest of the dish. Lots of onions, but don't worry, it'll all make sense in the end. Okay, so as you can see, all those onions, they cook down quite substantially. That's why I say you can use a lot of onions if it's going to cook down. This is what you want it to look like. You see, it's got this beautiful golden color. It's sweet. It's got a caramelized flavor. And this is exactly what we want to make our makluba. So now that's done. Now we're going to work on actually assembling the rice part. The rice part is important. After the chicken is done. After the chicken is done. So, so mom, so. tell us why we need to line the pot with tomatoes on the bottom. Well, we, pot, we line it with tomatoes because A, they give it good flavor. B, when you put it upside down, it will, um, it won't stick to the pan. The rice won't stick to the pan. And uh, see, it looks pretty. It's very colorful when you invert it upside down. And um, it's just. It, those are good enough reasons, Mom. Yeah. Those are good enough reasons. You that's do perfect. It. So we line that, and the chicken has been boiling and it's actually ready. So I'm going to put the chicken in here so that we can get it to cook. So first what I'm gonna do is take, use tongs for safety and take the chicken pieces and I'm going to put it on top of the tomato. All right, all the chicken, just like this. See, and I love that, that broth color, it's so pretty. And it smells so fragrant. So then you take, yeah, so these are layers. So we're gonna layer the cauliflower on top of the chicken, just like that, all the way around. Ooh. And just like the onions, there's no such thing as too much cauliflower, so use two heads. You could even use three heads of cauliflower if you want. So a lot of people like eggplant, some people use carrots. You could really go crazy with the amount of vegetables you that could. you use. Uh, some people use potatoes, you know, they fried potatoes. And uh, I myself don't care to put uh, potatoes because I figured it's more adding starch to the right. rice. But it gives a good flavor, so if you like potatoes with your rice, by all means, do it. Definitely. It does. So, and as you can see, I'm putting the caramelized onions on top of the cauliflower. So that's the next layer that we've got. Make sure you get all the onions in there. All right, very nice. Okay, and then the rice goes on top of everything. Okay, so, so. this is two cups of rice that we rinsed with water. It's being rinsed with cold water. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could use uh, jasmine rice, it is fine. You could use basmati if you want, mm -hmm. uh, that's fine. Um, uh, but you have to rinse it because what happens is you're getting rid of that extra starch. Okay. And it makes the rice fluffier in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, we measured two cups of rice, so we want about four and a quarter cup of liquid. So we're going to do it directly from this broth that has been simmering. So I have the cup right here, and my mom put a spoon here because she said it will not splatter as much. And put it on the, on the spoon itself. So put it on the spoon itself. Yeah, yeah. And then, okay, so that's one cup. Oops. There we go. Here's two cups. Oh, they pour, 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 pour. Two cups. Okay, two cups. Three cups. Okay. Four cups. Okay. And about a quarter cup. And that looks about right. And about a quarter cup. There we go. Uh, yeah, just right. See, okay. you want the, sh the water to be barely showing. You always... So first you try it to mm. see if oh, it needs salt. Definitely needs salt. Needs salt. Okay, so I'm going to sprinkle a teaspoon of salt. About, about a teaspoon of salt. Here's a teaspoon. We're going to sprinkle it sprinkle all over. There we go. Okay, so when we cook this rice, we're going to boil it for 10 minutes and then we're gonna reduce it to a simmer and let it cook for another 30 to 40 minutes and that ensures even cooking from top to bottom so that when we flip it, it'll look perfect. Yeah. Okay, so we let this cool off for a few minutes, maybe about 15 yeah, minutes. 10 minutes or so. Yeah, so let's so reveal what we have to do with this. to die for. <sighs> it smells okay. amazing. Now, okay, so. You're supposed to put it a few minutes like that. that. One, two, One, three. Two. Makluba. 
Okay, back to the Let's see what happens. Okay, let it okay. set for a while. You're supposed to let it sit like Just that. Just hang out with our hands. I hope it works. Please, please. Let it work, please. <laughs> it works. <laughs> our peoples, for our feasters, we gotta make this work. I don't wanna. One, two, two three, three. McLuhan! Ta-da! Woo! Woo! It works! It See? Awesome. Oh, wow! That it looks works. Awesome. That looks awesome. Okay, now for decoration, some people like pine nuts mm -hmm. and some almonds. So these have been uh, just sauteed in some olive oil uh, to add some toasty, nutty flavor to it. This is awesome. And then to serve it, you basically just put it in a bowl and you add some yogurt on top of it. You can do that as well. Mm. Okay, now let's do This that. is a work of art. I mean, wow. this is, this is, if you really want to impress someone, go out of your way. It's great for big holidays out of the year. And it, like I said, it's a one pot meal. It has all the food groups, but you could certainly serve this with the cucumber tomato style like we did with the Mujaddara video. If you look at our Mujaddara video from the past. But as I mentioned before, it's really important to put some yogurt on top. And top some people like to stir. On the side. I like yeah, it on the side. Yeah, or on the side. And you could stir it around. Here, why don't you take the fork and I'll try it. A piece with all. The chicken is falling off the bone here. Yeah. Oops. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. It's so good. The flavors are so I guess so you can good. call this Palestinian paella. Mm. Very simple flavors, beautiful presentation. Wow your friends and your guests with this, and I'm sure you will make so mm. many friends that they will not mm. leave your house. Mm, 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 mm. Thank you for joining us on Feast in the Middle East. For more recipes like this, subscribe to my channel. Click on that little circle. And also join me on social media. Um, on Instagram at Blanche Media, as well as Twitter at Blanche Media, and Facebook at uh, Blanche's Feast in the Middle East. Until next time, my mom and I are going to try to attack this whole mountain of food. Mm. Thank you, Mom, for mm. showing your tips and tricks to this time-honored mm -hmm. tradition. I'm so glad we're keeping Cito's, uh, mem uh, Cito's traditions alive. Mm. And the chicken isn't, isn't it? Is it's it's, it's insane. It's and insane. Tender. Yeah. So we're going to just amazing. dig in. Mm. I wish you guys could share it with us. Cheers. Cheers. Sat in. <laughs> mm. oh. I'm hungry. I'm hungry too. Oh my god, this is crazy.